to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. This past weekend, municipal leaders from across Canada gathered in Calgary, Alberta for their annual Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention. And in today's episode, we turn our focus to a topic that touches every corner of our nation, housing. On June 7th at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Convention, a pivotal discussion took place between Sean Fraser, the Federal Minister of Housing, and Tanya Rudick, the FCM past president. The conversation centered on the critical challenge faced by municipalities across Canada, the struggle to provide adequate affordable housing for their residents. As we know, the housing crisis is a multifaceted issue that affects cities, towns of all sizes. From skyrocketing real estate prices to the lack of affordable rental units, the problem requires a coordinated effort and innovative solutions. Now, during the discussion, Minister Fraser addressed these challenges head on, exploring how federal and municipal governments can work together to find sustainable, impactful solutions. Minister Fraser emphasized the federal government's commitment to supporting municipalities in their effort to tackle the housing crisis. He highlighted ongoing and new initiatives designed to increase the supply of affordable housing, streamline the construction process, and provide financial support to communities in all corners of Canada. Here is that entire discussion that took place at the FCM conference now. And then good morning, Mr. Minister Fraser, and good morning to everyone here. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi d'animer cette conversation avec l'un de nos principaux homologues fédéraux, le ministre de Logement, de l'Infrastructure et des Collectivités, Sean Fraser. So, merci tout le monde, c'est un plaisir d'être ici. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. And I know now that the special guest has been revealed, nobody's that interested in what I have to say. So it's, <laughs> the pressure's off. And there's no live mic right now, except for you and I. Well, Sean has been a leading member of the federal cabinet since 2015, serving in several different senior ministerial positions while representing his home riding of Central Nova in Nova Scotia. Uh, but he also lived in Calgary for five years, so he's well versed in the two-step, but he doesn't often wear a cowboy hat because he is already very tall. And for some time now, Minister Fraser has been on the front line of the federal government's efforts to tackle the housing crisis, something that all of our communities from the very smallest to the largest is experiencing. And from pushing forward with the Housing Accelerator Fund to engaging directly with cities and local governments on regulatory changes regu related to housing construction, he's been the face of this government's efforts, in his words, to solve this crisis. In this conversation, we're going to engage, as Carol so effectively did during our opening ceremony, the very urgent need for a municipal growth framework, and we've heard you use that frame as well, which we appreciate, to better equip communities to deliver housing, infrastructure, and local services to a growing population. And we know this is a major focus for each of us in this room. We've heard encouraging things from the Minister on proposals for a new growth framework, and we're going to dig into that now. And while housing is a key concern, FCM has been very consistent in our advocacy that each new housing unit must be matched with the required investment in infrastructure. People like to be able to turn on their taps, as we've experienced here in Calgary, and they also need to be able to get to their homes. We'll be asking you a few questions about supporting that need in our municipalities as we move forward. Okay, no further ado. It's been a busy few months for you and for municipalities as we've launched, or you've launched, the Canada's Housing Plan. How do you think these announcements will impact the housing crisis in Canada, and what challenges do you see on the horizon? Uh, look, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to engage, and I want to say thank you for the work that all of you do on uh, municipal councils across the country. Uh, uh, the policies that we uh, develop in Ottawa are informed by people who've got lived experience on the ground and who know the needs of their communities, and we've got to make sure that we continue to work uh, in collaboration if we're going to serve our, our shared constituents. Um, the question uh, on the impact that I expect some of these uh, announcements are going to have uh, and uh, some of the challenges that we want to see uh, is an important one. Uh, it's not the announcements uh, that are going to make a difference. It's going to be the implementation of the policies uh, that have been announced uh, where we're going to see progress. Uh, one of the things that I 
really take a lot of faith in is the successes that I see playing out in different parts of the country. Uh, when we stand up at the microphone to share news that there's going to be a, a particular number of dollars invested in a community, look, it might feel good in the moment, uh, but the reward that I see is when I get texts from uh, local mayors across Canada who tell me what they're doing in their community that would only be possible with local knowledge of what, where those opportunities exist. Uh, I think about uh, the conversions uh, I've seen that have used CMHC's programs here in Calgary. Uh, I see the successes uh, in uh, places like Waterloo converting employment lands to uh, residential opportunities. And I, Dorothy, I received a text this morning I haven't answered yet, so I'll get back to you soon. Um, but, but I see opportunities in, uh, in my own province with uh, uh, Mayor Mike Savage and the team at Halifax having a unanimous vote uh, to upzone the city and implement certain kinds of reforms that are going to make it faster and easier to build homes. There's no simple answer to the impact it's going to have because the answer is so varied as between communities. But there are some challenges that I see that we need to overcome if we're going to actually succeed when it comes to solving the housing crisis. Uh, capital, uh, the workforce, and whether we can get all three levels of government pulling in the same direction are, are the three big ones. Uh, we've got a potential $2 trillion challenge on our hands. Uh, this isn't going to be solved solely by government spending. We need to work together to set the table to attract that kind of investment if we're going to see uh, the successes we need, both in market and non-market housing, importantly. Uh, when it comes to the workforce, we need to change the way that we build homes. Uh, right now, if we have a perfect formula when it comes to municipal zoning, when it comes to uh, financing, we don't have enough people with the skills necessary to build the homes uh, if we're going to achieve the scale that we need. So we need to develop new training opportunities. We need to continue to welcome newcomers with the skills that we need. Uh, but we also need to incentivize uh, factory built homes if we're going to uh, succeed. Uh, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, no one level of government is going to do this alone. The federal government has tools. The provincial government has legislative authorities. And municipal governments have uh, real abilities to make it easier and faster to, uh, to succeed when it comes to home building. Uh, if we can all get on the same page and seize the moment, uh, the thing I believe more than anything else is that the problems we face may be big, uh, but they are solvable as long as we work together. Well, thank you very, very much, Minister. Um, my colleague and your friend often refers to uh, the feds having the money, the province having the jurisdiction, and we face the problems in our communities. So we appreciate your uh, acknowledgement that this is a complex set of issues, and we can't do this alone. Um, and as we're working towards that goal of solving these difficult problems, municipalities of all sizes are eager for new tools to help grow housing supply and tackle homelessness. And in order to grow local economies, renew infrastructure, promote public safety, and build more resilient communities in the face of extreme weather events, we truly are redefining our future. But we have limited means to do this. Property taxes and development charges and fees at the swimming pool are not sufficient and up to the scale of this challenge. And rural, heart, rural areas in the heart of our nation's agricultural and resource communities, like my very own Vegreville, Alberta, we're being asked to do more with less. And municipal revenue remains flat compared to provincial and federal revenue from sales and income tax from our growing population. And while the new infrastructure funding is very much appreciated, in the long term, we need to get away from these one-time fixes and develop new, more equitable forms of funding. We've talked a little bit about the municipal growth framework that we are looking forward to negotiating with all orders of government. Um, and I think we're on the same page about this. But how can we work together across orders of government to embark on this very important, timely conversation to develop a sustainable municipal growth framework that will support communities to meet the challenges of today and build better lives for Canadians. Look, this is an exciting uh, opportunity that I think has some uh, real merit for discussion, but we can't wait until we have a perfect uh, growth framework in place in order to uh, address the challenges that we're facing here and now. So in the interim, we're going to do what we can to make tools available within the federal government's uh, area of jurisdiction uh, to help support uh, the uh, investments that are necessary to uh, sustain the growth that communities have been experiencing. But if I indulge uh, the, the conversation about what could be if we can work together to establish a new framework, uh, it starts to make sense to me that we should, instead of having uh, a project by project application basis for uh, every new water pipe or every new community building, uh, we should actually start looking what integrated community plans look like. Uh, where I would love to see this conversation land over the next number of years is in a place where we can actually sit down with a city, 
or a community and say, what do you want to look like 5, 10, or 25 years from now? Uh, let's consider not just the next water project, but how does the water project support the next housing development? How does the health infrastructure uh, fit into the puzzle for a growing population? Uh, are we going to be able to ensure that there's enough parks and enough transit to build a livable community that people want to call home? And if we could agree on what a deal looks like for a city uh, and that we would fund that, uh, that would really help. But there's a couple of, uh, not obstacles, but things that I think we need to address. Uh, one, we've got a responsibility to demonstrate to Canadians that we're using their money responsibly. And we need to know that there's a line of sight into the money we're putting on the table and what it's actually going to uh, deliver for, uh, for the people who live in, in given communities. Uh, so understanding what projects are actually going to be in place is going to be essential. Uh, the second component that I think we need to work on is to ensure that if we're going to go down this path, we have a healthy asset management plan in place to ensure the investments we're making can actually be sustained for the long term and that we're putting measures in place, including more density uh, and smart city planning, to make the most of the infrastructure that we have so we're actually able to build out the necessary infrastructure at the lowest cost. It doesn't always uh, feel true on an individual project, but when you look across the, uh, the entirety of Canada, uh, you see very quickly these sort of smart planning decisions can have uh, multi-billion dollar savings if you are uh, operating at the scale that I think we all want to envision. Uh, but when I think to myself, what do I want for my own community? I, I want to make sure that all levels of government are working together to ensure that we have the health care capacity, ensure that we have enough schools for the uh, families who are moving in, and, and making sure that we're building out an opportunity for people to enjoy everything that my community has to offer and that we're doing the work collectively to attract employers so people have good paying jobs at the same time. Uh, so my sense is that there's real merit in pursuing uh, a united growth framework, but I think there's a few things that we need to clear up, and we need to make sure the provinces are at the table and buy into this model as well. Uh, there's an ongoing conversation about uh, whether the federal government should be investing directly in cities. I feel strongly that we should. Uh, however, different provinces have different views. So I think uh, I have an opportunity at the end, end of this month to discuss uh, this and other related issues with my counterparts in Newfoundland and Labrador, and uh, we'll be very much looking forward to see uh, which provinces are willing to sit down to uh, uh, advance this important conversation. Well, we look forward to embarking on that, and if you're uh, interested in some advice on how to um, balance the books... This so is many of you have my cell phone. I am not short on advice. It's... Uh... <laughs> Well, this is a group of folks that are used to uh, balancing their budget every single year. We're the only order of government that cannot run a deficit. So if you need any tips. <laughs> not only will we deliver on that promise, we actually are the ones that build the bridges, quite literally, and build the bridges between the people that comprise our great country. And we say all the time, as the government of proximity, this is not a cookie cutter approach, and what applies in Two Hills, Alberta may not apply in Toronto, but it may very well apply in Torbay, Newfoundland. So we can make those recommendations, and we look forward to tackling those uh, hard conversations with you. Municipal Asset Management Plan is another program that uh, many of our FCM members have been very happy to work on and develop the kind of community uh, growth framework, or sorry, I shouldn't even use that because that's our new term, planning for the future. We build the community of today for the people that aren't yet born and won't be living in our communities. And it, with that fund from the federal government working on municipal asset management planning, I would say that there are very few members in this room that have not got that plan 30 years from now, um, thinking about which road and which project needs to happen. Um, at the same time, we continue to have crushing growth. So we are looking forward to having this conversation. And increasing the direct funding. This is a bit of a challenging conversation in Alberta. We are looking at increasing direct annual transfers to municipalities to $2.6 billion and linking them to economic growth, complementing existing Canada Community Building Fund allocations, formerly known as the gas tax, would bring total annual federal transfers to municipalities to $5 billion. Are you open to a further conversation on this particular fund, which is one of the most essential sources of direct funds for this group assembled to make life more affordable for Canadians. Look, I, I'm always going to be open to uh, conversations about uh, making uh, more and more investments in uh, municipal infrastructure because I, I see the value. Uh, 
in the immediate term, of course, I don't have uh, an announcement ready for you today. I, I'm sure you can appreciate. Uh, yeah, all the boos come now. You'll, uh, you should put this. Uh, there's somebody speaking later today. You might want to put the same question to. Um, he's going to be mad that I, I suggested that. I, I'm going to put the mustache on in the back of the room. Put my hand up. Um, the um, uh, realistically, right right now, we've been so focused over the last couple of years in making sure that we don't give. Uh, any reason for the Bank of Canada to slow down the potential to cut rates. I was very, very encouraged uh, with the rate cut. And it will make a, a difference in the short term, but more important than the immediate impact of a, a relatively uh, uh, small cut of 25 basis points um, is the trend that I, I sense we're, we're starting to move in. We've seen inflation stabilize over the last number of months. We've seen the first rate cut. If that trend continues, uh, I think we're going to uh, be in a position to assess whether we can uh, sustainably increase investments in infrastructure without working against ourselves to potentially uh, drive inflation. Uh, so as we move forward beyond the programs that we have access to and the tools that we made available now, I, I think it, it is important that we keep this conversation open, but it ties back into the conversation that we've just had around a municipal growth framework. Um, one of the challenges that we have, despite the fact that there are reporting requirements under the Canada Community Building Fund, is there's not a great uh, line of sight for the Canadian public in terms of uh, the federal money that's transferred through to municipalities so people know that they're getting a good deal. I think if we want to work together to understand how we can demonstrate how the uh, transfer of funding from the federal government for municipal infrastructure uh, informs a community plan, so not, not so the politicians in Ottawa can see it, but so the people who live in communities can see it, and we can in good faith stand up and say, we're getting value for money here. Uh, I'm uniquely plugged into these conversations, and I believe we're getting value for money. But I don't know that my neighbors who live in my community who are even interested in politics necessarily see the tie between an announcement on an increase to the Canada Community Building Fund and improvements in the quality of life that they get to enjoy in their communities. So I think if we want to work together towards uh, a vision for individual communities that all three levels of government are buying into, I think that makes a lot of sense. But we, we really can't leave provinces out of this conversation. They're so integrated, and people, people don't live their lives in individual jurisdictional uh, challenges. Uh, they live their lives in, in communities. And if we can get three levels of government at the table to develop a plan for an entire community uh, that touches on all areas of jurisdiction, uh, then I think we have an opportunity to discuss what further investments we may wish to make that would be far more smoother, uh, smooth through an allocation-based system with that community plan rather than a project-by-project -project application-based system. Well, if you send the calendar invite, I am sure we will accept. We're ready. Um, and to your point, the Canada Community Building Fund in our community was the sewer main. Uh, we would be happy to have a grand opening, because I can tell you that if we did not have that construction project uh, completed with the funds from the Canada Community Building Fund, we could not support the growing infrastructure that we need for our community. Well, Minister, we are so appreciative of your time. Um, and if you have any last thoughts that you want to share with this group, uh, it is not only appropriate that Alberta host the largest ever uh, Federation of Canadian Municipalities conference, um, that we might also have the tallest ever uh, federal housing minister in our midst. So if you have some closing remarks, we just want to make sure that you know how much we appreciate uh, the ability to have some honest conversations about some really important topics that will be important for Canadians moving forward. Uh, thanks so much. I'm trying to build taller everywhere, too. Um, <laughs> look, I, I just, I just want to end with a, um, a note of gratitude. Uh, we don't develop policies effectively if we sit behind closed doors on Parliament Hill. We develop policies effectively when we work with community leaders who know the needs of their community and inform the policies that we put in place. Uh, we have now published uh, our plan to address the uh, housing crisis, and it's going to be iterative. There's things that we're trying that are going to work. There's things that we're going to try that we're going to need to shift uh, as we understand the real impact that it has in communities. Uh, consider this an open invitation to continue to be part of the process. Uh, we're interested in making real progress that's going to deliver the kind of change that people will see and feel on the ground to make their communities a place that they want to live. Uh, we need to create an opportunity for communities to be able to ensure the people who build the homes can actually afford to live in them. And we need to make uh, create opportunities for people who grow up in a community to be 
able to afford to stay there. Uh, there is not a politician of any partisan stripe or any level of government I've met who doesn't want to address these issues. I have all the faith in the world uh, that we can solve these problems, not out of a sense of blind optimism because uh, uh, we need to solve it, but because I'm actually seeing it happen on the ground. There are leaders in every region of the country who are implementing the changes that we can scale up nationwide. And I just want to say thank you because behind every policy that we've advanced in the recent housing plan, uh, there's a community who's actually implemented those plans already and we've stolen them as much as we can. After I finally graduated from uh, uh, my last uh, degree uh, program, I've come to understand that plagiarism in politics can be a very good thing uh, so long as you're willing to point out those who've, uh, who've uh, shown you the way. And uh, municipal leaders across Canada have been at the forefront of showing us the way as we develop some of these plans. So thank you, sincerely. Now, before we let you go, I just want to take a moment and say thank you to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities for allowing us to attend the four-day convention here in Calgary. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if today's episode did spark your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs from across this great country. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.